Hello everyone, my name is Russ Sorrells. I am one of the team members here at CapEx Sales. We represent companies like Cincinnati Test Systems. CTS is the largest leak test company in the country. Uh, we have a great deal of leak test expertise on our team. I've personally been involved in leak testing for over 20 years now at this point, which is hard to believe. I mean, I know I don't look that old and it doesn't look possible, right? But I started when I was like eight. So anyway, Leak testing, one of the most common questions that we get from customers is, should I use pressure decay or should I use mass flow? What's the difference? Why would I choose one versus the other? So wanted to give that breakdown here on this quick video today. So pressure decay leak testing. First, let's discuss the definition. Pressure decay leak testing is the measurement of a pressure loss over time. So we have a circuit that is pressurized. That circuit includes your part and obviously a transducer to measure the pressure change of your part as well as the pressure lines going to the part, the manifold that's in the instrumentation. That circuit pressure loss is measured over a certain period of time. And depending on the type of pressure decay leak testing, it might be calibrated to a specific uh, leak standard, uh, leak standard would have been used potentially in the calibration, or you may just be measuring a specific pressure loss over time. One of the key aspects to keep in mind with pressure decay leak testing is that it is volume dependent. So in other words, if you are measuring pressure loss over time and you say, I can't lose more than 0.1 PSI in 10 seconds, and you measure a volleyball pressure loss, then you measure a basketball pressure loss and you use the same 0.1 PSI over 10 seconds as your reject criteria, you're comparing volleyballs to basketballs. Uh, they're not the same. And so therefore, the smaller volume pressure is actually gonna be a pressure loss will be a higher leak rate than the uh, basketball. So we have to keep in mind that we can't have a universal uh, standard if we're testing multiple volume parts with pressure decay leak testing. So oftentimes though, pressure decay leak testing is calibrated to a specific volume using a known leak standard. That's the most common way to calibrate or to utilize pressure decay leak testing is by actually calibrating using a standard. Now, mass flow. The definition of mass flow is that we're measuring the amount of flow that it takes to maintain pressure in the part. We're measuring the amount of flow through a flow meter into the part. So the amount of flow that it takes to maintain pressure in the part. Well, what does that mean compared to pressure decay? Well, pressure decay, we are isolating the circuit, right? So essentially we're cutting the flow of air off and we're measuring the degradation of pressure. With mass flow, we are not cutting the flow of air off to the part. We are continually flowing into the part through a flow meter and essentially balancing the pressure across that regulator. So when you don't have any flow going in, it's going to measure zero as a result. So when to use pressure decay versus mass flow? Pressure decay is most commonly used for smaller applications. So if you have small applications, if you have very low leak rates, uh, high speed applications uh, are typically where we would utilize pressure decay leak testing. But again, remember if you have significant part variation, so with, meaning the volume of the part that you're testing is going to vary significantly, you'll want to use a technology that's more forgiving. And pressure decay is not forgiving because it, it needs to be calibrated to a specific volume or the test really is not consistent from one part to the next if we're using the same reject criteria, but the volumes are varying. Okay, so with mass flow, typically we're talking large parts. We talk, uh, we're talking about plastic bottles as an example, things that, that can tend to uh, have some balloon effect or are difficult to stabilize or they continue to expand during a test. So we want to use mass flow leak testing when we have high part variation. So if you have a part that's that's this size and then you have a part that's this size and then you have a part that's this size, you'll want to use mass flow technology because it is more forgiving because from a calibration perspective, you don't necessarily have to calibrate 
when you change parts. What you have to make certain of is that you have enough cycle time to properly test the part uh, based on the volume that you have. So you could use the same leak test for a part that has this much volume uh, as a part that has this much volume or this much volume and you could use the same test as long as you set the test up for the larger part so you had enough cycle time to process the larger part. So that is kind of the Reader's Digest version, the fastest that I could get through. When would you use one versus the other? They're very, they're very different technologies uh, because one is you know, an isolated circuit, very volume dependent. The other is more forgiving, uh, but at the same time, it is uh, potentially not going to be as uh, fast as a pressure decay uh, test could be. Uh, but again, it's very application dependent. You know, you talk to different salespeople, they'll probably all give you, you know, a varying uh, degree of um, confidence in whatever it is that they're gonna recommend. But as a general rule, uh, mass flow, larger parts, flexible parts, uh, and also high variation, because you do not necessarily have to calibrate. Now, of course, you can calibrate mass flow, but uh, I'm just saying from a general perspective, if you have a lot of variation, you don't have to do a calibration for each of the parts. Uh, you just have to make sure that your cycle time is long enough to test your largest part. So again, my name is Russ Sorrells. We are here in the Carolinas, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia. Uh, we work with Cincinnati Test Systems. Cincinnati Test Systems is the world's largest uh, leak test company. Um, they have, uh, under their uh, umbrella of products, they've got uh, Symmetric. Uh, they've also got uh, Shriner is uh, another company that is in their um, umbrella of companies. I think they just uh, yeah, purchased a company called InnoTech uh, as well. So a lot of companies that uh, are in that uh, family of products from Cincinnati Test Systems. If you're interested, want more information, if you want more of these videos to help you identify or answer questions that you might have regarding leak testing, throw them out at us. We're just trying to share this content with you. Hopefully it helps you make uh, smarter decisions with regards to which technology you're gonna apply and uh, how the technologies actually work. Uh, again, my name is Russ Sorrells. Have an awesome day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.